This is the Adidas Terex Agravic Ultra. With light strike, boost, and a rock plate, it sounds like a Boston 9 gone berserk. But is this shoe actually any good? It's time to lace up this beast and take it for a run. Ten point nine six miles, eight minutes, fifty five seconds per mile, and one hundred forty seven beats per minute today. Going out for a run on the dirt roads and trails near my in laws' house here in New Vienna, Iowa, which is where we are for the holidays. And it was a perfect time to test out this new Adidas Terex Agravic Ultra. Now, before I give you my thoughts on this trail shoe after just the first run, I do want to go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that I purchased myself. No one sent it to me. No one's paying me to make this video. And no one's going to get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about this Adidas Terrace Agravic, Agravic, Agravic Ultra. However you say it, Let's talk about this shoe. First, let's go over some specs. This is a 38 millimeter stack height shoe in the hail with an eight millimeter drop, giving us 30 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot. And there's a bunch of things that are going on in this shoe. We've got Boost, which is a somewhat heavy, but a very bouncy and cushion foam that also has a bunch of any rear return and springiness to it. Underneath that, we've got Light Strike Midsole Foam, which is a newer foam that Adidas is using in a lot of its road line. And sandwiched in between those two layers of foam is a rock plate, which Adidas is kind of calling a plate, kind of calling a rock plate. They're saying that it's gonna give you that rock protection while also giving you a little bit of a propulsive benefit as well. On the outsole, we've got a super thick layer of continental rubber with some very aggressive lugs, plenty of traction available here. And you know it's continental rubber, so it's gonna be grippy and it'll last you a long time. To the upper, there is a lot of stuff also happening in the upper here. There is a very breathable, but very strong mesh up in the toe box here with lots of overlays to give you protection, not only from rocks, but also from some of the elements as well. The lacing system gives you lots of options. There's some extra lace loopholes that you can use depending on exactly how you need to lock this shoe down. And underneath those laces, there's a very thin tongue with just a little bit of padding, but mostly it stays out of the way. It's got even a double notch in here to make sure that when this tongue bends, it bends in a way that's not gonna get in the way of your ankle. Moving to the heel cup, there is a bit of structure in the back, but not a terrible amount of structure. The main thing that I notice here is this part that comes up along towards the Achilles. It's very, very stiff, and we'll be talking a lot about this later on in this video. Altogether, this shoe comes in at a rather hefty weight of 11.6 ounces. The shoe does feel a bit hefty, in hand. Now let's talk about what it was like to run in this shoe. First of all, I would say putting this shoe on was a bit of a challenge. The upper is extremely stiff. Getting the shoe on, it felt more like a hiking boot than it did a running shoe to me. But once I actually got out there on the road, it stopped feeling so much like Robocop's feet and actually started feeling like a shoe that had some road manners to it too. I actually felt a bit speedy, especially for a shoe that weighs as much as this shoe does. I'm definitely feeling a lot of the stack height from the lugs, not necessarily so much from the pure stack height itself. So it does feel like a tall shoe, but ultimately because of how stiff the upper is, everything felt really securely locked down. A little bit too locked down, almost kind of like ski boot territory for me and very different from the kinds of things that I look for and even the trail shoes that I like. But ultimately, 
something that I was very much enjoying running in, at least for the first seven miles. Then we got to the portion of the run where I was actually in New Wine Park and I was able to get on some trails down there where there was a lot more changes in elevation, different surfaces to run on, and I really fell in love with this shoe there. It just feels like no matter what terrain I'm on, I'm able to just barrel through it because there's a lot of stiffness up in the toe box, so I feel like I'm very well protected from anything that I might kick or accidentally trip over. Because while there isn't exactly like a super rigid toe cap up here, there's a little bit of protection, not a ton, but just everything that's going on in the front of the shoe makes it feel very sturdy, makes it feel like I've got a ram up front that no matter what I might accidentally kick or run into, I'm gonna be able to just plow right through it. And the lugs and the stability of the shoe from all the lockdown I'm getting from that stiff upper really made it feel like whether I was stepping on something that was now a hard frozen part of the ground and was a little bit frosty or still not quite yet frozen and a little bit soft and mushy, I was able to handle those differences in terrain without really having to worry too much about my footing. I feel like the combination of boost and light strike with this rock plate is a really great combo. I'm getting a lot of the softness from the boost so that way it's easier on my feet, but the light strike and that rock plate are working together to making sure that I can still move quickly if I really want to get up and down the hills or through the turns. And I'm really loving the way that this whole thing is packaged together. Moving forward, since this was just my first run, there's going to be a couple of things that I'm definitely going to be looking at, checking into, uh, and doing a little bit of further testing. The first thing is it doesn't have like a true kind of like Adidas running shoe fit. I feel like the toe box is a little bit more cut off. The toe box felt a little bit boxy up front to me, and I felt like I was a little bit more slammed in up at the front. But the real area that I felt very locked in, uncomfortably so, was in the back of the shoe. Now, while I like the structure and stability that all like the lacing system and the stiffness of the materials that they chosen for the upper give me from a lateral perspective as I'm going through uneven terrain. In the back, it was just a little bit more than I, I wanted. This extension of the heel that flares up towards the Achilles has been rubbing into my Achilles. And even now, as I sit here filming this portion of the video, which is a couple days after the running footage that you saw, that area is still a little bit tender on the back of my foot. So I think that that's gonna be a break-in issue. I think that after a while, this is gonna soften up a little bit, either that or I'm gonna develop a callus on the back of my Achilles. And I think ultimately it'll be fine, but it's definitely something I'm gonna keep an eye on uh, in terms of whether this is going to continue to be a problem or if it's gonna work itself out. The other thing that I need to do in terms of my subsequent testing is to really get this thing muddy and dirty. So I felt like out there today, everything was pretty dry and or frozen. And I felt like it handled those uh, types of surfaces really well. But I think that where this shoe's really gonna shine is when it really starts to get muddy and a little bit more technical than the trails that I was on today. So there was lots of rollers, lots of ups and downs. It's never really flat once I get into New Wine Park, uh, but it's not the most technical of terrain for me to go over. So I'm going to need to find some other trips to kind of go on to get out of my comfort zone and find some different areas where I can get into some of the messier stuff and or some of the more technical stuff. But I think that with the way that this shoe is very stiff, it's designed for something that's gonna be a little bit more rugged and adventurous than what I took it out for today. And I'm really looking forward to an opportunity to do a little bit of that kind of testing too. So those are the things that I'm gonna be looking forward to. But overall, at right now, as of the first run, I am very excited about this Terex Agravic Ultra. As I'm starting to look at some longer trail races in my future, hopefully, this is a shoe that I think I'm going to find very useful as I start logging some of those longer trail miles. So stay tuned, hit the subscribe button so you can see a subsequent testing in this shoe. And if you have any questions in the meantime, feel free to put them down below or better yet, stop by the live stream that I do Monday through Friday right here on YouTube. I'd love to be able to talk to you guys in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?